again, the only thing that's different between a to the u and e to the u okay, is the fact that your base is not e, so you have to multiply by the natural log of the base. Technically, you can still do that with e to the u because the natural log of e is 1. Okay, so it's kind of like our chain rule when we technically don't have to do the chain rule, but we still could because the derivative of whatever it is is 1. Now the second part is if you have a common log with a different base, so log base A of U. Um, now, I'm pretty sure before when I had you write this in your notes, the way that we approached this was we rewrote that log as the natural log of U over the natural log of A. And remember the natural log of A is a constant so then when we took the derivative of that, that was, um, I haven't taken the derivative yet. When we took the derivative, it was the derivative of, uh, that's just the constant scalar multiple in front, so 1 over the natural log of A, times the derivative of the natural log of U is 1 over U, times U prime. So it's the same thing, okay? Um, it's just straight up giving you the rule instead of, looking at it as rewriting the natural logs, or rewriting the log as natural logs. Okay, so whichever way you want to approach it, it doesn't matter, you should get to the same conclusion. Okay. So, let's look at some examples here. Let's find the derivative of each of these. If our expression is y is equal to 2 to the x, Okay, y is equal to 2 to the x, then the derivative dy over dx is equal to the derivative of any exponential is itself times the natural log of the base. So times the natural log of 2 times the derivative of the exponent, which in this case is just 1. So if you want to rewrite this, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can put the natural log of 2 in front. Just be careful that you don't try and combine those twos there, okay? Now, let's say we throw a 3 in the exponent. Not really changing a whole lot, except for the fact that the derivative of any exponential is itself times the natural log of the base. If the base were e, the natural log of e is 1, times the derivative of the exponent, so in this case 3, so if we're rewriting this one, we would rewrite it as 3 natural log of 2 times 2 to the x. 3x. 3x. 2 to the 3x. Yes. Okay. Say we have something like the common log base 10 of the cosine of x. Now, if you will remember back to pre-calculus and logarithms, usually if it were the common log, base 10, the 10 is not there, okay? Remember, the 10 is not usually written. Usually, you would just see this as um, the log of cosine of x, okay? I put it in there just to help us, uh, as we're learning this, just know that that's understood to be a base of 10. So the derivative of this is 1 over the natural log of the base, base 10, times the expression inside the logarithm, so that would be times cosine of x, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Now, I would not be surprised at all to see this expressed as um, negative tangent of x over the natural log of 10, okay? Sine is in the numerator, cosine is in the denominator, sine over cosine is tangent. And it was negative sine, so it's negative tangent. I would not be surprised to see it expressed that way. Okay? Any questions about those? What's what? Yes, because we already did notes on these. 
I just hadn't explained it to you. We did it that day that I was not here, that I left that outline of notes for you to do when you took notes from the video. So let's look at some more examples here of some exponentials, or are they really exponentials? Hmm? Yes, that does say e to the e. <laughs> um, so let's think about this for a second. E to the e. What is that? Is, is there a variable? No, it's not e squared. That'd be e times e. Is there a variable in this equation other than y? No. It's a constant. Don't forget, E is a number. Okay? E is a number. It's just one of those numbers that's it's a special number. It has so many applications and it's a rational number that we represent it with a variable, but really it is a number. So we have a number raised to another number. So this is just a constant. So the derivative of any constant is zero. Ta-da! Yeah. Okay, the second one, y equals e to the x. Well, that's the easy one, right? It's just e to the x. Its derivative is itself. Its integral is itself. Okay, now what about f? y is equal to x to the e. How do we need to approach that? x to the e. It's a power rule. Mm -hmm. It's just the power rule because your exponent is not a variable. Your exponent is a number, so that is a power rule. So the derivative here is bring down the exponent, keep the base, subtract 1 from the exponent. That's it. Now, how about this last one? y is equal to x to the x. Mm, not quite. Okay. No, we've actually done this problem before. Okay, we have done this problem before. Um, so your exponent is a variable. So that makes you think, well, I should use the exponential rules. Okay. But then your base is also a variable. Mm hmm your base is also a variable. So that makes you think power rule, but my exponent's a variable, so what do I do? Remember that logarithmic differentiation? Okay, like I said, we have done this problem before. Uh, we cannot, we do not have a rule for a variable raised to another variable, so we need to use logs to rewrite this. Apply the natural log to both sides. So we've got the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x to the x. Use your exponent rules for logarithms to move that exponent to the uh, as a coefficient instead of an exponent. And then we can take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y times y prime, because we're taking the derivative of this with respect to x, what do we have on the right side? Product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. So I'm going to keep that left side the same for the moment until I simplify on the right side. x times 1 over x is just 1. So we've got 1 plus the natural log of x on the right side, but we're trying to solve for the derivative so we need to multiply both sides by y, the original expression. So y prime or dy over dx here is going to be x to the x times 1 plus the natural log of x. I can guarantee you, you will have a logarithmic differentiation problem on the exam. I can just about promise you, you will have one to do. 
like this. All right. So what about integration? Okay, what about integration? If we are trying to integrate a to the x, again, it's similar to differentiating. Okay, remember the integral of e to the x is e to the x. Um, but whereas when we took the derivative of a to the x, we multiplied by the natural log of a. It makes sense that if we're taking the antiderivative, we multiply by the reciprocal of the natural log of the base. Okay, so if we are integrating 2x, or excuse me, 2 to the x, not 2x, 2 raised to the x, okay, the integral of that is going to be 1 over the natural log of the base, 2, times the exponential, plus your c, your constant of integration. In the next one. Okay, 5 to the negative x. Now, technically, this is a u substitution scenario, but the derivative of negative x is just negative 1, so we just need to throw a negative in there. So the antiderivative of this would be negative 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the negative x plus c. If that had been 5 to the negative 3x, let's do that over here on the side. What if it was 5 to the negative 3 over x? That integral would be negative 1 over 3 natural log of 5. Okay, again, you could do the u substitution, but it's very simple u substitution. You know that you're going to end up having to move that 3 to the other side, so it's going to become 1 third. Okay, what about something like C? Now, do I think that they're really going to put something like this on the AP exam? No, I don't. But the reason why I'm putting it on here is to make sure you're not just in the rep repetitive motion of just applying this rule, applying this rule to whatever problem I put up on the board. Because what are we looking at right there? It's just a constant. It's just a constant. 3 cubed is 27. 5 squared is 25. So really, we are looking at the integral from 0 to negative 2 of 2 with respect to x. So when we integrate that, what's the antiderivative of 2? Two? 2x. Two so this is not even an exponential problem here. And it is backwards, but it's okay. We can, I mean, it, as long as we're just plugging in, it, it doesn't matter. Um, we don't have to fix it. Now, if you really, really wanted to, you could, but then you'd have to stick a negative in front. And... The only time you need to fix it is if they are asking you problems where they don't, like, give you the function. You know, if they told you that the integral from 0 to negative 2 of f of x dx is 5, and then they ask you a question about the integral from negative 2 to 4, then you would need to flip it around. So if we do have, where it sounds like we're Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would just, since I'm, since I know the function and I'm evaluating it, I'm just going to evaluate it like I evaluate any other definite integral. The only time I'm going to worry about flipping things around is, is like I was saying, is if if they if we had an example where they just told me that the integral from 0 to negative 2 of f of x dx is equal to 5, and then uh, let's say that they said that the integral from 0 to 3 is negative 1, and then they asked me, well, what is the integral from negative 2 to 3? Kind of write and think at the same time. That's when I have to flip it around. Okay. Um,